to bless people in this community. So let us be a people of faith and worship God together. Let me pray for us. God, I give you thanks for all the blessings that you pour into our lives, all the ways that you call us to serve you, to come to draw close to you, all the ways that you guide and sustain us, and most of all, for the way that you love us. We give you thanks today and let the congregation hear and say, Amen. I'll invite you to stand to your feet as you're able, rise in body or spirit, and let's join in our greeting and our hymn of praise. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that God loved us and sent His Son as a, as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God dwells within us, and God's love becomes complete in us. That's my, that's my favorite verse. I'm going to say it again. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in our hearts, and God's love becomes complete, becomes perfect in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. So I think I call this uh, sermon, this message, that God is love. That seems pretty obvious. But my alternate title is, It Isn't Easy Being a Christian. No, so, I never like to leave with a negative statement like that, but in this case, I'm going to, it's not easy being a Christian. And I think that, that might surprise us. But I'm going to take some time today to, to sum up what it means to be a person of faith, to be a Christian, a United Methodist, a spiritual being on an earthly journey. That's uh, Father Tehar D. Chardin, one of my favorite writers. And uh, the question he posed is, are we earthly beings on a spiritual journey? Are we spiritual beings on an earthly journey? I love to think about that. Well, I will tell you that it takes time and diligence and the help of companions on the way. And for the past few weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be a United Methodist and what makes our Christian denomination unique. We talked about how important it is to belong. And you know, human beings long to belong to groups, any kind of groups. From our earliest days in school, we were part of a, some kind of group, a class, um, to service groups, maybe as an adult you're part of Rotary or Lions Club or other kind of service groups, um, and social clubs, there are many of those. But it's important to know that at, on, as Christians, we are not alone on our spiritual journey through life. We're not, we're not Buddhists. They're on an individual path to enlightenment. I respect that. But as Christians, we know that we need one another. Um, God is always with us and has created a group that we call the church for us to belong to as companions on this journey. So just to, to uh, recap, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley and his brother Charles started a group while they were students at Oxford University in England. And they, they got together to study the Bible, to pray, and to help the poor and the sick. And from this simple beginning grew other groups in many locations around England and also in the American colonies, not yet a nation yet, just colonies, that eventually became the Methodist Church as, as the colonies became. So I, I know I'm summing up Methodist history. You should know this. I've talked about it before. Um, circuit riding pastors traveled from group to group, preaching and teaching, marrying and burying and baptizing new believers. And the local congregations grew strong. I would say that Methodists and Baptists uh, grew as the, as the uh, United States grew. They're very American denominations. You may not know that my great, great, great something grandfather, Solomon Trower, was a circuit riding preacher. And friends, but between Solomon Trower in the 1770s and Linda Potter in, in the 2000s, there has been no other preachers in our family. So, um, so there's a legacy, I think. You know, Methodists were known for their enthusiastic singing. 